Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Tariff Guides Wild Rift video. For today, we are going to take a look at a Yasuo gameplay from the Chinese server. I found a new channel, I contacted them if I'm allowed or get permission to take a look at these gameplays, and they agreed to it. So you have another source of amazing gameplay coming your way. So with this, we have so much of the Chinese server now, and in the bottom left, you see all the runes, and if you're, if you're asking yourself, why is there Ingenious Hunter? Ingenious Hunter lowers the cooldown of Titanic Hydra, and every single cooldown you have on basically every single item. Let's say you have Trinity Force. The Spellblade passive, or um, whatever you want to call it, is getting reduced from 1.5 seconds lowered by Ingenious Hunter, which is really powerful. And here we see a matchup against Aurelian Soul, starting with the E spell, or the third ability. With the third ability into ranged matchups, the Yasu can just go in for heavy trading and force the Aurelian Soul off the wave. As you see, the Aurelian Soul still packs a decent punch when it comes to melee champions, but he has to be really careful and he walks up and the Yasu instantly punishes him. Immediate death. And Many of you are wondering, why isn't the Yasuo building any type of crit? Outside of, well, one item in the, in the end. Why is he not building Infinity Edge? So, the reason is rather interesting. The Yasuo gets tankier and survives for a longer period of time, and given the fact that he lives longer, he will kill the enemy more likely. So all the items he goes for are basically tank items with AD. <clears throat> still sick, sorry. And But you still see one slight mistake against Aurelian Soul into Tower, and your HP bar is just gone. I don't know who, uh, like who brought forth this entire tank build, but it's unbearable to play against. My personal ban, let me know about your personal bans in the comment section below, is Yasuo. Like, whenever you play AD carry, it's just so impossible to play against this champion because his second ability just denies everything. And look how he's playing so aggressive. He is denying the Aurelian Soul as much as he can. What a daunting lane for the Aurelian Soul. Now he hits level 5 with the Power Spike. What a crazy skirmish in the bottom half of the map is going on. Flash is being blown left and right, and the Draven nearly killed the misfortune. If there's one thing you don't want into your games, it's a fat Draven. And the enemy team has a Jax, a late game carry, an Aurelian Soul, also a late game carry, and a Draven who is very strong during the early game. Man, my voice is going up and down. It's like a roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> like the uh, like the choices of Aurelian Soul trying to recall. Look at him. He just gets constantly denied. It's absolute pain, and the wave is still in a very good state. And now he just he just keeps on denying. He even ignites him. He just really doesn't want to give the Aurelian Soul any type of. He goes in for the play, and he lives because the shield is procked. It's a masterclass on the mid lane. He absolutely just completely clapped his ace hole. And now he's so fat, he even has access to Wit's End right now. Don't forget, Wit's End in this game, compared to the PC version, functions differently. Wit's End grants you healing, depending on the damage you deal with the item, once you reach 50% HP, or lower. And he holds the wave, stacks his Q free, goes for another play, hopefully fishing for another Q. And he's constantly looking for the opportunities to just get on top of the Aurelian Soul, dealing good damage to him. And the Aurelian Soul just can't even move up because the minion wave, like his own minion wave, is his enemy. Which is something you rarely see. Not many champions feature this type of gameplay that your own wave is your enemy. Similar to Misfortune. When you, whenever you stay too close to your wave, you see this double up jumping into your face and you lose like, not even a quarter, like a third or half of your HP. It's absolutely horrendous. And here, whenever the Aurelian Soul walks up, all he does is dash in, go for a quick trade, goes for a decent vision setup here, even though I would have preferred a deeper ward up than the top left quadrant, just to get a better, better information about what is happening. But every bit of information is still information. He just goes in for the knife. It just doesn't matter. And the ignite will be enough to kill him. And will he escape? I really doubt he will escape. But maybe the minion de and he... No way. Nah. 
The Shen Ultimate. Why was the Shen Ultimate build so small? Huh? Wait. The Aatrox has Serpent's Fang. No way. <laughs> the Aatrox rushed Serpent's Fang to deny the Nunu Shield as well as the Yasu Shield as well as the Shen Shield. How rare do you see actual itemization being impactful in a game? Like right here, it's the, it's some of the key moments where itemization actually made a difference, but you can always argue, did he not slow down his overall game experience in a sense of clearing and going for plays with Serpent's Fang? Or did he basically secure the play by just having more stats in a sense of denying the enemy the shielding? They basically get both objectives now, they have full control about everything, quickly picking up the dragon, getting a free call on the draven, he's now tilted. Now the entire enemy team is trying to rotate towards the herald, trying to force or deny the play, but it's just simply impossible. The nine walks too close, flash waves away, there's just no way anything can- The Aatrox goes in and steals it, it's a heist! Now the Aurelian soul flies past, goes for- that was a big yoink. The Jax now jumps in for a quick turn, the Aatrox comes in from behind, the Nami doesn't have- the Nami hits a bubble, it's a beautiful play by the enemy team, they're completely Collapse on him, but what can Yasu do right now? Does he have enough damage yet? Nice wind wall, but will it be enough? He goes in for the flash. It will. Oh my god, no! He just gets ran down. He has no chance of survival. There's just too many bodies thrown at him. The pain. And the misfortune also died. And this was a fight where the enemy used most of their abilities earlier, but they contested the Herald simply because they knew that the enemy also used key abilities before and at the dragon fight. So you see it's bloody. It is indeed bloody, and people follow up on plays. Like, if I've seen this one on, on, on the European server, there's like 1 in 50 lobbies in Challenger where this basically happens, and I'm not joking. And another thing why tank Yasuo is more prominent than the damage Yasuo, dying is so unbelievably easy on this champion. It is so easy to just randomly die when you go in with full damage. But with the full defense, what a beautiful combo on the Aurelian soul. There's just no, nah, you just didn't do this to the dragon. And he lives through the power of honey fruit and the, the Aatrox is just speeding in. He will be caught off guard and die here. Yes, he will, but the Aurelian soul lives. But did you just see what he did? To this goblin of an Aurelian soul. That guy wasn't a celestial dragon. It was more like a pet dragon. Like the new the new thing you saw in the League of Legends uh, release for the new champions. More like this, like a baby dragon. And it's now in a very rough state. The game is 10 and 8, but don't forget the majority of the kills are on him and the entirety of the enemy team scales brutally well. Jax, Aurelian Soul, like even the Aatrox, when he finds any of the backline champions, will want to be misfortune. Like I've played Ezreal yesterday with a full tank setup. I played plated steel caps and gauntlet into a full AD team, and the Aatrox still one tapped me. And yeah, try to escape from an Aatrox with uh, Yumu's Ghostblade and Shojin. That's not gonna happen. Now we go for a rotational play again. The Midnight Tower was gone anyway with the power of the Herald. It's a big catch on the Jax up here. Certainly he will die there. So there's no way the Nudo cast ultimate. The Jax flashes under the tower. He's just too tanky. The Draven hits the ultimate from the base. And the Shen sadly gets the kill. One of the saddest things you can ever imagine. The Shen is a utility champion here. But a beautiful knockup onto the Aatrox. The Aatrox dies instantly. The Boon Tower is placed beautifully. But the enemy cannot do anything right now. And there's a beautiful play by the Swain going in. The Nunu is following up with the Shen ultimate on top. But the Aurelian soul ultimate hits everyone. But nobody dies. And rather than wasting his time on the map, he goes for the reset and will catch another wave on the map. He now has his Divine Sundra. And with Divine Sundra, he is so much more of a champion. Don't forget, in the bottom left, you see he has Ingenious Hunter. Ingenious Hunter lowers the cooldown of the Spellblade of Divine Sundra. With that, he has so much more sustained in fights because the cooldown goes down to, I think, about 1 second instead of 1.5 seconds, which is massive. And he just goes forward again, he just doesn't have any fear. The Draven is just, he just takes no damage. He was tanking the tower the entirety of the time. He just doesn't care. And 
if there's one thing in this game I believe was a mistake, it was defensive boots. Like the things you can combine, he just does, like he just doesn't care. Like he just doesn't even take damage. He took damage for 15 billion hours and still lives. It is absurd to take a look at this, and it's so goddamn overpowered. Again, what do you believe about defensive boots? Because I believe they are way too strong as they are, and they have gotten nerfed quite a few times. But I think champions just get too tanky, and now with even more health items, it just gets even more effective, and he just goes in for a beautiful combo. The Aatrox is running away, but he can't hit. He plays the Wind Wall, I think, to gain vision, just in case he loses vision, and then dash over to the Aatrox, but it wasn't fast enough, or it was on cooldown. And yeah, he is so strong right now. And the Swain is absolutely styling on the enemy team in the backline down. An absolute skirmish happening down. There is absolutely insane. And now maybe he will. We will see him cast Qs into the air to get the Vine Thunder Prox to push the tower faster. Or he just doesn't because it slows him down in the sense of taking down towers. I don't know. Would be curious to see. But normally, like when you walk around as a Yasuo or a Yone, and your Solar Charge Blade, or this item, it's just very helpful to just get one stack already from the item. Because the cooldown will already go down from the, from the item, but the effect on you will still remain. And now he has Divine Sundra being super tanky, and the Aatrox is just absolutely obliterating them. The team just overstayed their welcome. Luckily for them, however, the enemy, like the Nasher, isn't available yet. Oh my god, he walks up to them, he is absolutely crazy, he just goes in deep for play, beautiful combo, beautiful combo with him and the Nunu, the Nunu just catches them off guard, he made so much time being so tanky, and he just doesn't die, he just he goes in deeper, it's absolutely, what is this champion? What is this champion? Yes, he is now 12 and 3, but how is he allowed to live? Like, you can't tell me that this is okay. And there's other champions that are equally as, like, equally as terrifying to face that are just completely overstat. But whoever came up with the Yasuo um, tank build, I hope your sleeves get wet when you do the, the dishwashing. He just, he just doesn't, he just doesn't care. He just even got the Nasher, the Shen ults him now with the Serpent's Fang effect on him, but the Aatrox will not get. The Aatrox flashes over the wall, a nice taunt, a nice knockup, and they have to escape. The Shen will be left for the slaughter, or will they turn? The Nuna is rolling around the edges, the Shen is just too tanky, and we see 205 healing from the Divine Sundra. A bubble hits him, however this was possible because there was a Wind Wall. And it's getting really, really terrifying. With him dead, the entire source of damage now for this play is gone. They're trying to just bail them out. They're all collapsing. If the misfortune reaches in time, we have a beautiful ultimate. She, she ults very late and goes out of range. And the Swain basically does everything on his own. And they all survive. Really big play by the Swain. And now the Nunu has his eyes on the Aurelian soul. He just had enough and he's just flying away. At him. He says, nope, I'm I'm out. I will not deal with this anymore. And now he's going for the mortal reminder? Or is he going for okay? He's going for the mortal reminder now. And in case you also didn't know, his ultimate grants him armor pen. So if he gets um, another armor pen item, he has insanely much armor pen, which renders most of the enemy defenses kind of useless. And since he has a decent hybrid damage profile with the items he has, it's very difficult for the enemy to do something. And the Swain just survived for so long. Did you just see one hit of his Q dealing so much damage, reaching so many people? Oh, if he hit the backline with the Q free, would have been a beautiful play. The Shen misses the Shen, the, the flash taunt, but the damage on the Draven is just too high. The Draven just doesn't have enough damage to do with anything. The Aurelian Soul tries to defend as much as he can, but the Draven walks too close. A beautiful windfall to block the bubble. They just don't have the damage to deal with them at this point. It's impossible. The Aurelian Soul is still way too weak right now, and the the team of the Yasu is just way too snowball. Like they're way too strong. Look at the scoreboard right now. But he's also holding nearly like close ha to half of all the kills. Pushing this wave as fast as possible, finding the reset, and now it's time for a mortal reminder.
And he goes for the proto belt. Another nice thing they do, like Yasuo players, um, they just spam their ult button in Fork of War just in case, um, or just out of range, if somebody does a knock up from Giga far away. The insanely big Aurelian Solon comes in, a big carry, he just nearly gets killed. Like, if he was a like, the damage, Yasuo would have died instantly. Divine Sundra and so much tanky stats allow him to live. He ults over instantly, he survives, and now it's a... It's an absolute massacre. It's a rundown fiesta. The Swain just goes on deeper and deeper, slows down everyone. Nobody can kill the Swain, and it's an absolute destruction for the enemy team. Did you see this, how you pressed his ultimate to relocate because he hoped for a knockup just to get out of a pinch? Like, this is just making it a... <laughs> he just did a little oopsie. We just love it. But it's also something you do against Evelyn. You spam your exhaust button into Fork of War, and then it's Dover. And again, make sure to subscribe to the channel. They presented us with a beautiful video. Everything's in the description below, and enjoy the content. It's massive. And we'll see each other for a new Rift Guides video very soon. See you guys.